C++ is a general purpose programming language that has been in widespread use for nearly 40 years. But is it worth spending time learning and understanding this monster of a language? Well, as most things when it comes to software development, it depends. Specifically, in what you're looking for. Therefore, we're going to look at some of the reasons you may want to learn C++, as well as some of the reasons why you may wish to avoid it. C++ is perhaps one of the most versatile languages out there. In fact, I'd argue it's perhaps the one language that can do it all. To give some of my own history, C++ was the first programming language I learned, and because of this it has enabled me more than anything else. I had originally wanted to learn how to code video games when I was younger, in which C++ is highly used in the game industry. However, I quickly found that C++ could be used for pretty much any software project, including web APIs, mobile apps, data science, embedded systems, cross-platform, GPU processing, and many others. C++ really can be used for pretty much anything. Therefore, by learning C++, you're guaranteed to have a language available to you that you can use to build whatever you want. C++ is fast. In fact, C++ along with C are often used as the baseline languages for benchmarking performance. The reason it's so fast is due to its low level of abstraction within the language and the fact it compiles down to machine code. Therefore, if you're looking for a language that is used in mission-critical applications where the lowest of latency is required, then C++ is a fantastic choice. Due to this, C++ is used in a number of industries where other languages just aren't viable. One of these industries is finance, where even a few milliseconds of latency can cause a good trade to be missed. As with all power, there are caveats, however. Because of C++'s low level of abstraction, advanced topics such as memory management or thread synchronization aren't hidden away from the developer. This means whilst it's possible to write very performant code, it's also very possible to make some pretty performant mistakes. Because C++ provides very little abstraction, it means that many concepts that are hidden away in other languages are able to be learnt when using C++. Topics such as pointers, mutexes, pass by reference, pass by value, the heap versus the stack, and many many others are all hidden away in higher level languages such as Python, Go, and even Java. That doesn't mean they no longer exist, however. Quite the opposite. It is just that the language does a very good job of preventing the developer from ever needing to interact with them. But that doesn't mean developers shouldn't know about them. And by learning and using C++, you'll encounter all of these concepts at some point in your journey. You'll also be able to bring this understanding and knowledge to other programming languages, which can help you to make better decisions when building solutions in the future. When you are presented with these problems in your journey to learn C++, it can be really helpful to have access to a platform which can explain some of the more advanced topics in a fun and easy way. That is where the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org, can help. Brilliant is the best way to learn computer science, math, and data science interactively. If you're looking to learn C++ or any other programming language, Brilliant can support your journey by providing customized content that fits your needs, whilst allowing you to learn at your own pace. Brilliant also supports different skill levels and is great for both beginners and advanced learners alike. I recently helped someone dive into learning Python code in order to begin automating aspects of their job. Brilliant was the perfect tool to allow them to easily understand the basics, starting with the Thinking in Code course. This course teaches the fundamentals of programming, such as loops, algorithms, conditionals, and arrays, and does so in an environment without needing to write any code. After completing this course, it was then much easier to jump into some actual Python code in order to solve some real-world problems. So, to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free, visit brilliant.org slash dreamsofcode, or click the link in the description. The first 200 will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. A big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The fourth reason I believe C++ is worth learning is that it would likely always be in demand. As I mentioned, C++ has been around for nearly 40 years, and it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Big companies such as Google, Apple, and Adobe are heavily invested in the C++ ecosystem. Not only this, it's also used in many other industries, such as video games, movie production, telecommunications, scientific research, and financial, as we mentioned earlier. Even the Bitcoin source code is written in C++. Therefore, if you're interested in a language that will stand up to the test of time, well, C++ is one of them. 
And even though C++ has been around for a very long time, this doesn't mean it's outdated. Which brings me on to reason number five. C++ was created back in 1985 by Bjarn Straustrup. Since then, it has become a standardized language by the International Organization for Standardization, also known as ISO. This means that versions of C++ are actively developed and standardized. And since 2011, new versions have been released every three years. Each newer version bringing new features and improvements to the standard library. Despite the language being centered around low-level abstractions, we've seen a number of new features appear, such as smart pointers, lambda expressions, automatic type deduction, and many others. Having these features in C++ allows it to have the best of both worlds, enabling developers to either use modern features to ease development, or to dive into lower-level abstractions for greater control. It's your choice. So C++ is pretty great, and you may think it's worthwhile learning. But before jumping into a C++ tutorial, it's worth understanding some of the drawbacks to the language. The tooling around C++ is nowhere near as wonderful as it is in other languages. In fact, organizing your code project and build tools are probably some of the harder parts of using C++. There's very little hand-holding here unless you use an IDE, which I'd probably recommend to somebody new to C++. Setting up your project with configurations and make files is going to be way too much just to get started. Not only that, you have a fundamental lack of dependency management available to you, instead relying on system libraries instead of what other languages provide, such as npm for Node.js or pip with Python. However, this does mean you'll have a greater understanding of your operating system and how to deploy code differently to other languages. If you really want to learn as much as you can about software development, then C++ can help you get there. But if you just want to build something as quick as possible, then C++ is probably not the right choice. It's no secret that C++ is incredibly complex. In fact, this complexity has been the main point of criticism from many notable programmers, such as Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, Rob Pike, one of the creators of both Go and Unix, and Ken Thompson, who designed the predecessor to the C programming language, B for Barbie. C++ itself has many, many features, all of which you'll end up encountering as you slowly progress through learning the language. Each of these features comes with its own set of caveats, and you're likely going to break things over and over again. This is all part of the process, however, and with the PTSD you gain from learning the language, you will come through the other side a better developer for it. This, for me, is the greatest reason to learn C++, and you'll learn concepts about software engineering that you'll be able to take with you to pretty much any other language. Except maybe Haskell, which is another topic for another time.